Okay. So um, for our group project, we decided to go with natural selection, more specifically natural selection of peppered moss. My name's Brittany. I'm Evan. I'm Jessica. I'm Hyam. This is the general overview of our PowerPoint. So first, we'll be going over background research of natural selection in peppered moths. Then we'll move on to question and hypothesis. Then we'll be discussing methods, results, conclusion, then broader impacts. So what is natural selection? Natural selection was a theory proposed by Charles Darwin. It involved the process of, processes of organisms adapting to their environment and organisms with more favorable traits selectively reproducing um, and as a whole to, to help the species survive. Um, this led to evolutionary change as it displayed how populations change over time as they adapted to their environment. So next I'll be discussing about the peppered moths. They live commonly in Europe and North America. They live about a year and their life cycle begins when they hatch as larvae during summer. Now their body color when their larvae blends in with the environment which works as a protective mechanism. And they also undergo transformation in which they turn into cocoons for the winter because it, that helps them to um, survive the cold temperature. To continue, their predators include flycatchers, nuthatch, and European robin. Um, for their protective mechanism, they fly at night to avoid those predators um, that hunt during the day. They also camouflage, meaning that the pattern on the wings um, looks similar to the legends on the trees. And there are two kinds of peppered moths. The typical color pepper moths have white wings with black dots and carbonaria colored pepper moths have black wings with small black dots. The dark colored carbonaria peppered moth was not known before 1811. After field collection in 1848 from Manchester, an industrial city in England, the frequency of the variety was found to have increased drastically. By the end of the 19th century, it almost completely outnumbered the original light colored typical moths, with a record of 98% in 1895. The evolutionary importance of the moth was only speculated upon during Darwin's lifetime. It was 14 years after Darwin's death in 1896 that J.W. Tutt presented it as a case of natural selection. Due to this, the idea widely spread and more people believed in Darwin's theory. Bernard Kettlewell was a researcher in the Department of Zoology at the University of Oxford. He investigated the cause of the appearance of dark colored moss since the Industrial Revolution in England in the 19th century. He conducted his first experiment in 1953 in the polluted woodland of Birmingham and a second experiment in 1955 in the clean woods of Dorset. The experiment found that birds selectively prey on peppered moths depending on their body color in relation to their environmental background. So peppered moths were originally white with black specks on the wings. This allowed the species to camouflage against tree trunks Due to a genetic mutation, black forms of moth were now introduced to the species. At the time, black moth transfer survival was significantly less than light colored moths as they could not camouflage to their environment and they were easily detected. In the 19th century, the ratio of carbonaria moth to typical moth flipped. This was due to the rise in industrialization and coal fires. There was an increase in air pollution causing black and tree trunks and walls. The change not only had a dark physical appearance on the surroundings, it also impacted the ability for light colored moths to camouflage. Typ typical moths were now easily detected by their predators and they were rapidly, rapidly vanishing as the amounts of carbonaria moths were increasing since their characteristic, characteristics were favorable in this environment. In the mid 20th century, the roles had flipped once more. Due to the Clean Air Act, there were controls in place to reduce air pollution. 
This act led to improved air quality in addition to tree trunks that were becoming cleaner and allowing lichen to grow again. This created another shift to the amount of light to dark colored moths in the area. Typical colored moths were favored once again as they were able to camouflage and hide from their predators, increasing their population whereas carbonaria colored moths were easily detected by predators and once again threatened. This is an, a perfect example of how natural selection favors a species that is most favorable in the environment. For this experiment, our question was, does natural selection consider the color of the peppered moss and why or why not? Our hypothesis is, if carbonaria colored peppered moss live in light forests, then their chance of survival is lower. Whereas if carbonaria colored peppered moss live in dark forests, their chance of survival is higher compared to the typical colored peppered moss. Typical colored peppered moss display an inverse relationship regarding survival chances in different colored forests. So the methods that we will be using in this experiment will consist of a virtual simulation to observe natural selection in play on the peppered moth population. Um, to begin, we will start by putting an equal amount of both light and dark peppered moths um, into a forest. Um, we will choose a light forest option first. We will then play as a predator and hunt the moths for about one minute. Um, we will then observe the graph for population change and record the data. This will be done in percentage of population. Um, repeat this four times and then take the average of the four trials, again, in percentage. Uh, we will then repeat steps one through four with the dark forest option and compare results afterwards. Uh, for this experiment, the independent variables will be the color of the moths and the color of the forest, and the dependent variables will be the population percentage of moths that survive. Um, so we will be seeing how the color of the moths uh, within different color forests affect their uh, population and survival rates. So after conducting the four trials individually, we've come up with this data table. In the first row, we have the percentage of the light moths that have survived and then the dark moths. The, in the very top column, we have light forest and then the dark forest, which we have divided up by the four trials and the averages. Okay, so between the four trials, the average um, survival rate of light moths in a light colored forest was 71%, whereas the dark moth in a light forest only had a 29% of survival. In the dark forest, the light moth had a 10.5% of survival, whereas the dark moth had a 89.5% of survival. So afterwards, we created uh, two pie charts to help further illustrate the relationship between the population changes between light and dark forests. As you can see in the light forest, the typical colored peppered moths drastically um, outnumber the, the dark moths at 71%, uh, whereas dark moths are only at 29%. In the dark colored forest, the carbonaria moths had an even higher survival rate of almost 90% and the light colored moss were barely almost 11%. So in conclusion, um, the color of the moth does in fact drastically affect their chances of survival within their environment. Um, this is clearly displayed by our results as in the light forest, the typical colored peppered moths had a much higher uh, survival rate compared to the carbonaria moths because their color closely resembled the color of the tree bark. This allowed them to camouflage easily with their environment and thus enjoy, uh, avoid uh, predators. With the industrialization of the area and the darkening of the bark, um, the survival rate for the typical colored pepper mo peppered moths plummeted um, and the carbonaria moths um, 
had their survival rate significantly rise. Um, this effect effectively displays natural selection in motion because the population changed over time as a result of the most environmentally fit moths having higher survival rates and thus reproducing more. So this experiment leads us to consider the impact that pollution can have on other species. So our virtual experiment, like I mentioned in the conclusion, shows that the moths change its trait to better adapt to the environment and to increase their chance of survival. So with this in mind, we can expect other species to undergo changes as well via natural selection. So the pollution can be a factor that will pressure for speciation, which is a process where populations evolve to become distinct species um, by causing genetic drift. So an example of this is some bacteria um, developing metabolism where they can feed on toxic wastes like um, the carbon tetrachloride. So we can expect other species to undergo these kind of changes as well. The results of pepper and moth research is an amazing story that has been made famous all over the world. It is one of the best known examples of evolution by natural selection, which was Darwin's greatest discovery. The pepper moth is often referred to as Darwin's moth. Survival of the fittest was a term used by Charles Darwin proposing that organisms best adjusted to their environment are most successful in surviving and reproducing. This can be seen in our experiment. The color of the moth that was able to camouflage to its environment were favorable and found in abundance. Because the world has, a cha has been changing for millions, in fact, billions of years, the, cha the need for change is crucial for all living organisms. As the climate and earth changes, living organism organisms must also make changes to adapt to their environment. Variation and physical features in a species are needed as, a as they benefit not only the individual, but the entire species. These features are preserved or selected via natural selection through reproduction because individuals and species that have, have them need them for survival. So this is a um, famous quote by Charles Darwin. It says, it's not the strongest or the, of the species that survive nor the most intelligent, but the most responsive to change. And I feel that was a very impactful quote as it related to our project. These were the references that we used during the research for our experiment.